This comparison of the RTX 4070 Ti and the 7900 XT will showcase these two cards at their fastest settings while trying to maintain maximum image quality. This is as much a showcase of software technology as it is GPU architecture. And some of the results are really interesting. Just wait till you see what happens in Cyberpunk. So, how are we going to get these results? Well, every game will be using ultra settings with any ray tracing turned on. This will means we'll be working from the maximum visual quality. Then we'll be leveraging DLSS and FSR upscaling to upscale everything from roughly 1080p resolution. This means that 1440p will be up using quality upscaling, 600p will be using balanced, and 2160p will be using performance. This will give us roughly equivalent visual fidelity between all resolutions. This lines up with recent settings recommendations from some AAA titles. Then we'll be using NVIDIA's frame generation and AMD's fluid motion frames. And finally, we'll be using ray reconstruction on any game that supports it. Each of these games have been tested in nine games that support their frame generation technology. And even though both companies have been expanding the number of games that are supported by their technologies through various means, there's still not complete overlap like there is with upscaling. So first we'll check out the five games that directly overlap to see how these two cards stack up. Then we'll look at the full nine game picture to see how the overall scaling is behaving on these two cards. And then we'll take a deep dive into some individual games where we'll look at some interesting aspects that popped up while testing. Let me flash the specs of my test system on the screen now before we jump into that five game average. Pause the video now if you want to take it all in. Okay, now on to those performance results. Here are the five games represented in this graph. You can see, even with ray tracing being leveraged in three of the five games, the raw unaided performance of these cards is neck and neck at every resolution, with most results being within the margin of error, though neither card is averaging over 60 FPS at any resolution. Turning on upscaling changes that, and now both cards are sailing to an easy 60 plus FPS performance at every tested resolution. The 7900 XT does seem to be pulling away at our lower two resolutions, but you'll see the reason for that when we investigate the games of note. But here's the real kicker. When we turn on the frame generation technologies, we see the 7900 XT just blast way out in front, with very high refresh rates over 120 FPS at all four resolutions, while the 4070 Ti manages high refresh rates for the lower two resolutions, but it can't even make it out of smooth range for the two higher ones. Even when we look at the full nine games for frame gen scaling, we see that AMD's fluid motion frames well outperforms Nvidia's frame generation, and the gap just gets wider as the resolution goes up. Nvidia frame gen just costs more resources than AMD fluid motion frames to execute, and when a card is pushed to the limits, especially when it's in a memory starved state like it can get at some of the higher resolutions, it just can't perform. Whereas fluid motion frames tech is delivering a consistent return all the way up to the 2160p resolution where it finally sees a slight drop off in efficiency. Now let's take a look at the games that are affecting these results in interesting ways. First let's look at Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is mainly responsible for the interesting upscaling results we saw. Using its epic preset with RT on, we see both cards competing evenly matched with their raw performance at all resolutions, but when we turn on DLSS and FSR, we now see the 7900 XT shoot past the 4070 Ti at 1440p and 600p ultrawide resolutions, while staying relatively close at the super ultrawide and 2160p ultrawide resolutions. Now, you may look at this and think, way to biff the benchmark, Scott, but this is actually demonstrating the balance between the traditional raster performance and ray tracing performance on these cards. At both the 1440p and 600p ultrawide resolutions, the 4070 Ti is limited in performance by its traditional raster cores, which is why the performance scaling is rather low while the 7900 XT's performance is limited by its RT cores, which scales very well with reducing resolution. I even ran the 4070 Ti with FSR quality, because that's something you can do, and got the same results as DLSS quality. But when we move the Super Ultrawide and 2160p resolutions, if we compare the 1440p Ultrawide to the 1440p Super Ultrawide, which are both using quality upscaling, we see the 4070 Ti's scaling start to match the XT as it becomes limited by its RT cores at this higher resolution and now sees equivalent scaling to the 700 XT, and turning on our frame generation technology only exacerbates the performance disparity. In Cyberpunk, while the 4070 Ti does see its raw performance crippled at higher resolutions thanks to its low VRAM, it doesn't experience any upscaling shenanigans as both cards are fully limited by their RT cores, leaving it in a commanding lead over the 700 XT. 
but turning on frame generation turns the tables and now the 7900 XT is outperforming the 4070 Ti in Cyberpunk 2077 at every resolution. That sounds like one of those things that shouldn't be possible. Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but I think there may be a reason that despite this game supporting every other tech under the sun, it didn't support AMD's fluid motion frames natively until right before they ended development on the game. Because boy would it have looked bad for Nvidia if it was losing in performance to AMD in their most co-marketed game. Starfield, which supports both frame generation technologies in-game, keeps everything pretty even with both raw performance and the upscaled performance, but as soon as frame gen gets turned on, the 4070 Ti gets left in the dust at the two lower resolutions. And is Nvidia's frame gen even trying on our 2160p ultrawide? It's a similar theme with Immortals of Avium, which also supports both technologies. Where the 7900 XT starts with raw performance lead, but both cards see equivalent DLSS and FSR scaling that keeps them both in the conversation, until that is, the frame generation is used, at which point AMD's fluid motion frames just dominate the Nvidia competition. With Diablo 4, we see a similar start, but despite Diablo 4 doing an admirable job managing memory and keeping the 4070 Ti performing well at every resolution, even though it would like to use a full 15 gigabytes of memory like it does on all my 24 gigabyte GPUs. All that memory condensing is obviously exacting a performance toll, a toll that we see return when DLSS is used to lighten the load. When we turn on frame generation, we see the 4070 Ti get one of its best performances yet, though despite a strong showing, AMD Fluid Motion Frames just delivers more frame rate. And even though it's using the driver version and not the native implementation, a top-down isometric game like Diablo is about the perfect use case for driver-based AMD Fluid Motion Frames, so the 4070 Ti doesn't get any advantages for being native. As for the Super Ultrawide results, Diablo 4 is just super weird about this resolution and doesn't allow it, and this seems to cause frame generation issues. And if the AMD solution wasn't completely circumventing the game engine, I'm sure it would have issues too. Now that we've seen all the performance results, with such a big disparity in frame gen performance, is the 4070 Ti always destined to lose? No, and there's a couple reasons why it holds its own, and in the future could benefit from all the extra performance that AMD Fluid Motion Frames provides. First, let's look at both cars' performance as is and their advantages and disadvantages. When we look at raw performance, or upscaled performance using DLSS or FSR, we see both cards delivering similar frame rates, even when ray tracing is being used, with maybe a slight edge going to the 7900 XT. But where the NVIDIA card has the advantage is in image quality. DLSS is still the upscaler to beat when it comes to image quality. Though, when NVIDIA frame generation and AMD fluid motion frames are used, AMD obviously has the upper hand here at this level of GPU especially when the resolution gets higher. Now again, the NVIDIA users can claim to have a better looking generated frame, though this is only true as long as they're able to produce the same amount of FPS, with the AMD car producing between 39 and 65% more native frames than the NVIDIA car, it negates that advantage. Because it has more native frames, the frame generation can be more accurate because it has less change between the two frames to interpret, and the generated frame will be on screen for less time allowing your brain to ignore any anomalies that would be showing up. The state of things right now is you're either picking between a better looking upscaler with NVIDIA DLSS or a more performant frame generation technology with AMD fluid motion frames. And then it comes to availability. Where NVIDIA has the edge is in native implementation. Frame gen is in more games than AMD fluid motion frames right now. And this is important for first and third person shooters and high speed action games with lots of quick camera movement as the fluid motion frames current driver version doesn't support it too well, though that might change with driver version 2. Where AMD fluid motion frames has the edge is it's in a ton of games. Almost all games support it, and they can use it really well, especially in certain types of games. Any game that has a fixed camera or is a top-down isometric view is going to work wonderfully. Anything like Diablo or City Skylines or Total War, etc., etc., is going to work great with the driver version. There's some good news for NVIDIA users though. AMD has announced that it's going to be decoupling AMD Fluid Motion Frames from its FSR upscaling technology, meaning that NVIDIA users in the future may be able to use DLSS upscaling with AMD Fluid Motion Frames frame generation, which if it maintains its impressive scaling on NVIDIA cards, 
may be the way to go. So the final decision on which of these cards you should be getting to leverage frame generation technology is going to come down to the games you play and the games you plan on playing, and if they're going to be natively supported in the future. And if not, then AMD is probably your best bet because the driver version works quite well. Now, one good thing for both of these cards is in our average, both cards were able to hit a smooth 60 FPS just using upscaling, which is universally available in almost every game nowadays. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to get more videos like these, and you can check out these two videos to see deep dives into both of these cards. Now, if you want to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon link below and also affiliate links. I'm Scott, and I'll see you next time, Altwide fans.